talk a lot about honesty and integrity. Yes, that is very important and several things were mentioned in the inaugural session. But we also want leaders who are forward-looking and inspiring because they have to give a clear direction, clear sense of vision and mission. So they have to be proactive, forward-looking. And what is more, in the exercise of authority, that they are competent to lead and exercise their authority wisely. You know, we, in, the, in, in, in our Christian churches, we talk a lot about servant leadership. But the wise exercise of authority requires that you are caring and considerate, compassionate that you care. You will not want to dominate them and show that you are the boss. And sometimes church leaders also, unfortunately, the big laps. I'm in charge. You do what I tell you to do. I don't care what you think and feel. That kind of an attitude will not do. And will not be acceptable. And in an entrepreneur, that's the business he has launched, that he's competent to lead and exercises his authority wisely. Building a vibrant organization through empowerment of your workforce. By this, empowerment of the workforce comes through giving them a sense of belonging and pride in the work that they are doing and enhance their performance and that they trust your leadership. Success for a Christian businessman is not just amassing wealth Christian businessmen, but empowering co-workers and amassing wealth, increasing wealth by an empowered workforce. And also benefiting the community and society. My friend, Freddie McNutzer, the founder and chairman of Dimensions, loves to come with this quotation. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. What is your contribution? You make a living by what you get. You create wealth, but empowering your people and benefiting the community and society is equally or more important. For a Christian businessman, success in the business world speaking as a Christian businessman. Success in the business world is doing business with gospel values. Biblical principles. Doing business with gospel values is doing business God's way. And there's something for us to take a look at. I have a whole PowerPoint presentation which I knocked out last night because I was told that I had uh, just 25 minutes to speak. Doing business as partnership with God. 
what does this mean in practice for a Christian businessman? What is it that distinguishes you as a Christian businessman from any other businessman? What is Christian about you? If you're like everybody else and doing everything that anybody else would do, are you a Christian businessman? You're a businessman, yes. But are you a Christian? What is it doing gospel business with gospel values? What are these values you need to take a look at? That is doing business God's way as partnership with God. We need to take a look at that. And I want to add here, I believe one of the next moves of God is going to be through the believers in the workplace. If this is true, and today, people are becoming more and more, especially our evangelical brethren, that God is working in the marketplace, in the business world, to transform the world today. The business people are the most powerful people in the world. And they do business God's way, they can transform the world for God. I think this is so very important. Transforming your workplace for God. In what way can you transform your workplace for God? For you yourself to realize that you are in business and business is the most powerful sector in today's world and if you are leading in the business world for God you can be a tremendous power today Our Protestant brethren, evangelical brethren, they talk about called to business, called to business. In the Catholic Church, this is business is a calling. They speak also of business as mission. It's not just priests and missionaries going out to foreign countries in the mission field to transform the others. No, a businessman has a calling. You are a businessman. In the Catholic Church we've totally talked about that's a profession. Vocation is that of a priest or, or a religious. And so we have in the Catholic Church priests, religious, and the, the bishops and cardinals dominating the church. And as we make said, it was Pope John Paul II, who, when I was called to Rome to do the seminars for the bishops, he said, Anthony, or he used to call me Anthony with a heavy Polish accent, he said, This is the century of the laity. And we need to empower our businessmen to realize their calling. If being in the business world is a calling, it is God calling you in that professional work as a businessman. And you are called to be his witness in the business world. Can you as a businessman realize your mission? It's a mission and a ministry. 
Sometimes they have told, said, you know, oh, I want to go into full-time ministry. Because being in the business world is not full-time ministry. If business is a mission, you have people like Kent Humphreys and all who came out to India and did seminars at, at the YMCA in Bombay. He said, this is a full-time ministry. It's a mission. There is no superiority of a priest and religious as we are taught in the Catholic Church that that ministry is superior to this is equal mission. And so God is calling you. It's your vocation in God's eyes to be His witness in the business world to transform the world for God. For a power you can be when you are truly <coughs> united to transform the world for God. When you realize that your business is a calling. You are called to business. It's a mission. You know, I, I, I've changed the slides now, so I don't have the rest of it which I've deleted in this one. A Christian leader has to be highly motivated. We need people who have great self-confidence. Others may not have confidence in you, but that doesn't matter. That you are attempting a job in the business world to transform the world for God is going to be challenging. And whatever great the challenges may be and whatever obstacles you may have, whatever setbacks you may have, you are not going to give in and give up. You will persist because your confidence stems from your confidence in God whom you believe has chosen you for that mission, that ministry. My friend Freddie Mendonca has a lot of challenges in running dimensions. There are times he may feel like just giving in, giving up. No. But he persists. How many times he has told me I, th that he believes in the power of prayer and that he knows that that is what keeps him going. If you look on your work as mission and ministry in the business world, your power and your strength comes from God who has chosen you for that mission and ministry. And you will have the power of persistence. It's not naive persistence but stems from your faith in God who has chosen you and your power of persistence is due to God. And so you turn to God when you have problems and challenges. And let me tell you, the challenges you will have to face as entrepreneurs in the business world are very great at times. And can discourage you and make you feel to give up too many obstacles, too many challenges. Never give in and never give up because the Lord has called you for that mission. I know I've exceeded my time, and uh, I hope the organizers don't mind. Thank you, thank you very, very much, the Reverend Father Anthony D'Souza, Society of Jesus, S.J. Ladies and gentlemen, inspiring. Thank you so much. As you were speaking, Father, I was thinking how many times when you said a pat on the back for the employees. That when was the last time I ever said thank you to my mother or to my wife for the lovely meal they made? I don't remember that. But today I've learned. Thank you so much. Today when I go home, I'll tell my wife thank you for the lovely meal. Okay, we have got four questions quickly. Uh, Father, we have got four session, sessions uh, the, of, uh, of the people. And one one will ask you a question. Thank you, just quickly. I so, also want them to know I'm not running away. I'm going to stay on today and I will be with you tomorrow. 
anyone wants to talk with me or discuss with me, I'll be glad to share time with them. Great, that'll be on a one-to-one. -one. Right now, this side, do you have a mic here? This side? Thank you. Any one person will decide any question to father on. Very authoritarian. Do what I tell you to do. I don't care what you think and feel. That one too. As I said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And for a leader, for an entrepreneur, businessman, you are in charge of a group or in charge of an organization. Be kind hearted. Be caring. And you'll go a long way because you'll take the whole group along with you. So one or two may take advantage, but because of one or two are taking advantage, call them and talk to them. On the other hand, letting everybody know, you do what I tell you, I don't care what you think and feel. That autocratic authority that makes people disgusted. Thank you, thank you, Father. From this side, one person, please. Yes. This gentleman, can you give him my please? The Bible principles. What comes out very clearly, people come before wealth. And if you want to empower people, I mean, if you want to create wealth, empower your people first. And create their wealth by, because you have empowered people. If your focus is only on money, and may well, and you don't think about empowering your people, you are not following the gospel values. And I think this is something that we have to keep in mind. People are far more important, and that's what the gospel values are, that's what the biblical principles are. Business principles maybe you can make a quick buck. It's not the achievement of the bottom line, achievement of the target, short-term gain. You can have short-term gain, but long-term purpose. The, 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 what you are leaving behind, the legacy you are leaving behind. And the tragedy in our country is, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, I'm not speaking of Christian businessmen, but a lot of entrepreneurs who want to make a fast path. Well, it comes before people. Wealth comes before the legacy you want to leave. Wealth comes before the, the purpose for which you are involved. If you create wealth by empowering people and people come first, that's following the gospel values, the gospel principles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, this, this gentleman here, please. Yeah, you can pass the mic. Thank you. You saved that. Father, uh, I am from uh, basically a non-Christian background and uh, when I come to the Lord, I mm -hmm. left my army job and I started ministry. As you say, I am now pastor and uh, leading an organization called Internal Life Fellowship Society and I found very difficult uh, to survive myself mm -hmm. when I come to the ministry and when people I baptize and uh, their livelihood provide, I found very difficult. So, need has been identified, education and uh, social community development by doing that kind of work that uh, livelihood could be provided to the church people. But I was also called to business uh, uh, conference in Los Angeles uh, last uh, December and there also I learned about the business. I have now 65 people to working uh, with me and uh, but you have been given all this uh, uh, success sharing about uh, the, all of your presentation and really I appreciate on that but I want to more uh, put more value on the, this uh, you say the uh, business uh, doing business with gospel value how as a protestant I face many difficulties especially from uh, our Christian uh, uh, background that we are I am doing uh, that uh, business and how I will be exposed to do and bring more prosperity in the ministry? That's a very good question you have asked. And I, let me tell you, I have frankly great admiration I have for our Protestant ministries. The tremendous work that they're doing 
the challenges that they are facing. And God has sold up quite a number of them are giving up their work and business to, to go into full-time ministry. And they become pastors. And the church cannot support them. And then they feel, okay, I've let down. I think it's good that they take a look before they make the transition. But when they call it full-time ministry, then you want to think only that ministry makes this more satisfying to God. Because you're full-time ministry. That's why I like to emphasize call to business. If business is a calling, that is God calling you to be full-time in the business world. There is no, and unfortunately even in our Catholic Church, we have taught this, the vocation to the priesthood, the vocation to the religious life. It's a vocation. The other thing is a profession. So, as, you know, your profession is a business world. For me, what I like, what our evangelical brethren are doing today in the world, and we've had two, three seminars in Hyderabad, and one we want to have in Bombay, the YMCA, but I would like to get even our Catholics involved in that, to realize business is a vision. And take a look at that. And then you will not start wondering, oh, if I become a full-time pastor, I'll have to support myself and the people that cannot support me. Okay. What about St. Paul? St. Paul was a worker. He did that job as a full-time job, not to be a burden to his Christian community. And he carried on tent making. Why can't we follow that example too? Was, was that less of a ministry for him? What about Jesus Christ himself? For how many years he worked in the carpenter's shop? 